What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to our San Francisco Giants franchise mode. We are about a month into year number one, sitting third place in the NL West right now. We're ahead of the Diamondbacks, so we're playing better than I was originally anticipating this team playing. Um, and because of that, I've decided it's time to kind of become those full contenders, try to improve this team a little bit. I don't think I did anything crazy. I improved our prospect pool as well as brought in, I think, a bigger, uh, definitely a bigger power bat in the outfield. Might have hurt our fielding a little bit, but the power is now there in the outfield. Those trades that I made, because I made two of them, will be coming a little bit later in this episode. I'll let you know. But for the time being, I just want to catch you up. What's happened around this league, some injuries, some signings that have happened. The only free agent signing that happened, which was back on April 10th, was by the Detroit Tigers. They wound up signing catcher Francisco Magia to a one-year, $1.5 million contract. So that's the only free agent signing there um and also i think he might have been like he's 28 b potential like they they got a nice signing there i'm surprised he's still in triple a i thought that they would have wanted to call him up to the majors get him some play time but uh no they gave him a one-year contract for one and a half million dollars and said hey you're gonna play triple a ball you know i'll sign that right now um any but uh moving on Injuries around the league that have happened. New York Yankees, Garrett Cole fractured his forearm. He will be out three to four weeks. So just like in real life, Garrett Cole is hurt. Another injury that is similar to real life, but a little little less uh, or a little more severe. Toronto starting pitcher Kevin Gaussman broke his arm and will be out one and will miss one to two months as well as relief pitcher Eric Swanson dislocating his ankle. He'll be gone six plus months basically ending his uh, his season. Um, that will be just about the end of his season unless the team makes the playoffs in which he will then return. Another player that's gone for the season will be Chicago White Sox center fielder Luis Roberts Jr. also dislocating his ankle and will be gone the remainder of the season. It sucks. That's basically telling you that the Chicago White Sox are probably going to be the worst team in the MLB right now. They might even be worse than the Oakland Athletics because of that injury. Detroit Tigers will also have an injury to catcher Jake Rogers, who broke his shin and will be out two to three weeks. Houston center fielder Mauricio Dubon uh, will be out with a fractured foot one to two weeks. Oakland's starting pitcher slash ace Paul Blackburn had uh, separated his shoulder and will be gone one to two more months. Atlanta starting pitcher Realdo Lopez tore his hamstring and will be out two to three more weeks. Miami's first baseman Josh Bell fractured his wrist and will be out one to two months. Cincinnati starting pitcher Nick Martinez uh, has a shoulder strain and will be out one to two weeks. Pittsburgh's right fielder Andrew McCutcheon, the lifeline of Pittsburgh, broke his ankle and will miss the next one to two months with that. St. Louis Cardinals everyday catcher Wilson Contreras broke his finger, and he will be out one to two months. I feel like he could play through that. Um, he might be able to play first base, play some DH, uh, but he definitely will not be behind the mound because people will be stealing on him left and right because he's, there's no way he's going to make that, that throw down a second with a broken finger. Uh, and then the final uh, injury uh, is to the L.A. Dodgers center fielder James Outman, who tore his hamstring and will be out two to three weeks. Now, I know I said that was the final injury, um, but I, I kind of lied. This is the final MLB injury. Now, top 100 prospects, I went and looked at who was injured over there. Three of the top uh, three players in the top 100 are injured and actually pretty severely injured as well. Chicago White Sox catcher Edgar Cuero, who is ranked 74th, tore, uh, has a torn finger ligament and will be out two to three weeks, pretty much missing little less than a month's time. 76th ranked prospect for the uh, for the Washington 
Uh, Washington Nationals center fielder Robert Hassel the third broke his arm and will miss one to two months. And then Colorado right fielder Jordan Beck, who is ranked 89, fractured his foot and will be gone one to two months as well. Now, there has been some trades that have already happened in uh, in the league. And conveniently enough, it, it's kind of funny. Uh, three teams, including ourselves, including ourselves, have made two trades basically back to back. Starting off on March 25th, Oakland Athletics send shortstop Aldemi- Aldemiz Diaz um, over to the Cleveland uh, Guardians for center fielder Isaiah Green. Then the Cleveland Guardians wound up trading relief pitcher Scott Barlow on March 27th, two days later, to the Toronto um Toronto Blue Jays for shortstop Tucker Toman. So they got themselves, I guess, two prospects. I mean, Diaz, I don't think is really a prospect. Toman is. Um, I don't know what they're doing there. I guess they're looking for some shortstop depth. I think that they can play other positions as well, but primarily it's shortstop depth. I don't think either of them are on their MLB roster Um, And then two trades from the Los Angeles Angels happened on April 2nd. They wound up shipping out relief pitcher Matt Moore over to the Arizona Diamondbacks for starting pitcher Ryan uh, Ryan Nelson. And then they wound up sending second baseman Luis Rangifo to Tampa Bay for relief pitcher Phil Matten. So they shipped out a relief pitcher. For a slightly younger relief pitcher, basically the same overall, got themselves a starting pitching prospect and shipped out, I think, a really good second base prospect, Luis Rangifo. He can play just about everywhere as well. I don't know why they shipped Rangifo out, but, you know, managers are going to make whatever decisions they're going to make. Now, the two trains that we made happened today, all right, April 30th. This is about a month after, uh, about a month into the season, like I said. Um, We're making some minor league moves. I'm shaking things up. I'm sending 71 overall catcher Tom Murphy to the Tampa Bay Rays in exchange for relief pitcher Taj Bradley. Now, I know some of you right away are like, oh, that's unrealistic. They're not shipping away Taj Bradley. This is why I traded for Taj Bradley, okay? Tom Murphy is going to be there every day or at least going to be making their MLB roster. He's not going to be down in our AAA organization anymore. He's going to be their starting and best catcher on their roster. They got him for two years. He's a decent bat as well, much better against lefties than righties, but he does have the potential to be their every day catcher for them. Now, why did I choose Taj Bradley? Honestly, I was looking for a trade partner for uh, Joey Bart, and they wound up wanting to do Joey Bart for Taj Bradley. I said, hold up a second, let me look at this. I wound up sending them Tom Murphy instead because he's a better catcher. He is a little bit older, but he's going to be a a better catcher and their best catcher on the roster compared to if I set them Joey Bart, in which he'd be, I think, their second to third best catcher on their roster. But that's not to mean I didn't stop myself from shipping out Joey Barr as we did send him along with Austin Slater, who's having a pretty good season, batting 260, um, and uh, third base prospect David Villar um, over to the New York Yankees. Now, what did we get from the New York Yankees. First off, we are eating a massive contract for their outfield. We are acquiring big power bat Giancarlo Stanton. That's right. We got ourselves a big bad bat up there in the outfield now. Dude's fielding really isn't there, but it is better than Jorge Soler, so he will be playing the corner outfield. He will not be playing... uh, he won't be playing DH for us. He, it's just not happening. Now, I was okay eating that large of a contract for him because they're going to be getting a better average at bat with uh, Austin Slater. 
um, and we we got some some budget. We got we got some money uh, available to us, especially through the years. I'm not thinking Giancarlo Stan's going to be on this team for the entirety of his contract. He might retire. I might try to ship him off for some scrub just to try to get him off of our books. Um, but we have enough salary cap. Even next year, when his pay increases, we have enough to be able to sign. I believe everybody that we need to be getting now. The big kicker here is they've been sh- they've been shopping somebody on the trading block that a lot of you guys, another top prospect, you guys are not going to wa- uh, really like that they're trading away because uh, in real life, I don't think that they would really do this either. Uh, but they are we're going to be acquiring thirty the ranked thirty sixth best prospect in the MLB. Jason Dominguez, the switch hitter. He's batting around 226 right now in the minor leagues. I know all of you guys are just like, what the fuck? They're not getting rid of Dominguez. They're not getting rid of Dominguez. Hear me out, all right? Joey Bart is now their top catching prospect, the former number two draft that was supposed to replace Buster Posey, now on their roster. They now have a catching prospect, and not only just a catching prospect, but he's now also one of their best catchers on their roster. They got themselves David Villar, who's, again, he's 66 at around, 20, I think he's 26 years of age. He plays first, second, and third. Guess what? He's now their second best first baseman, second baseman, and third baseman on their roster. Austin Slater, who they're getting Giancarlo Stan off of their books, freeing up some salary cap for themselves, and they're getting a better, aver- a better fielder and a better hitter that hits for average and still has a little bit of pop in Austin Slater. Now, Austin Slater can also play first and second base. Now, I don't think that he'll be the best first or second baseman on the roster, um, but he still has the prob- the possibility of them playing that. He can play everywhere in the outfield, first and second base. They got the utility. I think this is going to pan out for the New York Yankees. He's really not that wor- much worse than Giancarlo Stanton, especially overall-wise. Stanton at 76, him at 73. Now, with those moves, uh, we got to edit the lineup. All right, we got to find a place for Giancarlo Stanton um, in our lineup. So I'll be real quick going through our roster um, for the major leagues. Give me one moment. All right, so here we go. For the time being, we're going to have Giancarlo Stanton platooning. Um, he's only going to be batting against left-handed bat, uh, left-handed pitching because uh, he, he absolutely crushes them. 98 power, 75 contact there. So against left-handed pitchers, we should be annihilating every e- pretty much everybody. He's going to be playing left field. So the new left-handed uh, lineup is going to be Lee, Chapman, Stanton, Soler, Flores, Strada, Yastrzemski, Luciano, and then Patrick Bailey hitting cleanup. Against righties, I just couldn't find a spot here. I was close to replacing uh, Lamont Wade Jr., but he's got a lot of quirks. Lamont Wade Jr.'s kind of been a hero here. He was early in the year, really popping off in the home run department. If his batting average does start to drop or he gets cold, um, him or Yastrzemski, we might wind up benching them for Giancarlo Stanton uh, because Yastrzemski's on fire right now. I can't take him out. Um, and they're both better against righties than lefties, so it wasn't like I could I could platoon them in, in against lefties and righties right now um, with Yastrzemski and Wade in left field and then have Giancarlo Stanton on that corner again. Um, so Giancarlo Stanton, big contract, but I think we're going to bench him against against righties uh yeah i think we're gonna have to i mean is there a an average here that tells me the difference between righties and lefties not really i mean he's batting 324 he's batting 295 i can't i can't bench them um, so that's how we're going to be looking just for the time being heading down into that AAA organization. How are we looking? We got Jason Dominguez against right-handers batting second. So the new lineup down there in the AAA organization is Helio Ramos, Jason Dominguez, Reggie Crawford, Luis Tori- uh, Toribo, uh, Cashel, Walton, Wisely, 
Martorano and Luis Matos against righties, against lefties. It's going to be Toribio hitting leadoff, following by uh, Keuchel, uh, Reggie Crawford, Wisely, Dominguez will hit fifth, Walton, Schmidt, uh, Martorano, and then Luis Matos again hitting cleanup. He was originally our leadoff guy, but... It just wasn't really working out there, batting sub-200, so we're moving him down in the lineup. Triple-A organization now. We're moving Taj Bradley into the starting rotation, kicking out Hayden Birdsong into the long relief role alongside Jocko Ma- John Michael uh, Bertrand. Once Robbie Ray and Alex Cobb are fully healthy, um, we're going to be sending both of these guys into our starting rotation, probably calling someone up from our double A organization to play either reliever or maybe and move one of these relievers into the long relief role or, or vice versa. Mm-hmm. Um, call someone up to play that long relief role. Um, but anyways, guys, that is going to uh, be the start of this one. Let's start moving things along, see how this team is going to play. We got Brian Bello and the Boston Red Sox coming up. Who we got pitching? Johnny Cueto, followed by Blake Snell and Logan Webb. We got to win two out of the three games here on our road stretch. And we're going to start off with a loss. Blue Jays want to offer us Genesis Cabrera. B potential, okay, for relief pitcher Ryan Walker. Are you serious? 27 years years of age, B potential, 70 overall. He's been pitching down in AAA. He hasn't even been called up to the majors. And they want a 61 older. I mean, I'll do this. 100% I'll do this. We get ourselves a nice young relief pitcher. He'll be one of our best pitchers in the bullpen, too. Yes. Thank you, Blue Jays. Thank you. We did lose. Um, Taylor Rogers blowing it. Oh, did he blow in late game? Oh, that sucks. That sucks. So we lose the first game since making those moves. Pitching rotations. We got Genesis Cabrera in there. Nice, nice, nice. Was uh the other guy must have been on our MLB roster. All right, so Cabrera now in our bullpen with Bickford, Tyler Rogers, and Luke Jackson. Oh, Taylor Rogers is our setup guy, right? So our setup man, Taylor Rogers, blowing it for us. Unfortunate, but you know he's gonna he'll be fine. But another left-handed pitcher now in our bullpen. He's going to be actually starting in the majors for us compared to being in AAA down there in Toronto. So a nice, another just minor league move. Ship it, ship. I don't know why they wanted to do that. I really don't. But now Snell and Webb coming up. These are our two aces back to back. These are two wins. If we get the run support, we're up eight to nothing. Blake Snell. He's got a shutout going late, two outs, bottom of the eighth. We basically got to pitch an inning, 1.1 innings. I can do it. Let's do this, Snell. Let's do this, Snell. The batter, number five, shortstop, so We do got some low energy. But game's almost over. There we go. Forcing fastball in. Strike one. Matsui Yoshida and Rafael Devers on first and second. Strike two. Snell is feeling it. Now let's try to hit him with that curveball. Got him swinging, looking silly. Snell with the strikeout. Blake Snell was such a great signing. I'm so happy. Like, we chose the San Francisco Giants before the Matt Chapman and Blake Snell signing. And if they didn't sign in real life with the Giants, I wouldn't have gone out and signed them in our franchise. I wouldn't. I've let another team fucking try to sign them. But now, now, bottom of the nine, Tristan Casas up. 0 for 2 with a walk. He's six, so we're facing the bottom of their lineup. All we need is three outs here. 
Liner right past the first baseman, Wilmer Flores. Damn it. Almost got a glove down on it. Just barely missing that one. So man on first and second. That'll be it for Blake Snell. Team is coming to take us out after a, a miss. I'm going to go yell at Flores. You son of a bitch. Just in playful manner. Just playful manner. You son of a bitch. Costing me my complete game. Luke Jackson coming in to finish this game off. Are we going to get a shutout though? Bob Melvin real happy down there in the dugout. He's happy with how this team's been performing. And we do. We do get the complete game All shut out. Eight tonight. innings, eight First strikeouts, and five Giants. walks. Allowed four hits. Blake Snell hits. did. No uh, team got off to an early start. Matt Chapman hit a triple, a double, and had an RBI. Lamont Wade Jr. went one for five with a home run. That's why we didn't take him out of the lineup. And Wilmer Flores, three for five. Two doubles and three RBIs for the first baseman that fucked up. See? That's why you can't just yell at them. You don't know what they did hitting-wise. We don't know what they did the rest of that game. All right. So let's uh, simulate past that. Auto fix. We had, uh, oh, because we called up the catcher. Mm. One second. I got to fix minor league. Got to put that other catcher in. All right. Uh, Eric Silva will have, a, uh, have to bounce back after a rough month of April in which he posted a 10 ERA down there in double A. That's, that's unfortunate. Not much we can do there for a double A pitcher. Uh, RJ Dabovich was hit hard in April, posting a 4.7 ERA while issuing nine walks in 15 innings. Come on, Dabovich. Dabovich. Uh, Hunter Bishop tore it up in April, posting a 3 point. Oh, sorry, a .329 batting average in 73 at-bats while driving in 10 runs. Andrew Keichel had an outstanding month of April, batting .333 and driving in 11 runs over 39 at-bats. Thomas Shapuki posted a .64 ERA in April, punching out 13 batters in 14 innings and down in double A. Uh, Carson Weisenhunt had a strong month of April, posting a 1.57 ERA and punching out 30 batters over 34 innings pitched. He is one of our top prospects for a reason. Glad to see Weisenhunt is having himself a phenomenal month down there in Triple A. Uh, injury down in Double A, just auto it. Now Logan Webb against Nick Pavetta. This is for the series. We pick up an eight to two win, back to back, eight goal, uh, eight, eight run games against the Boston Red Sox. Another series win there. What is that in a row? One, two, three, four, five, six. Six of our last seven series have been won. And that last other one was just a split between the Arizona Diamondbacks and us. But now we got a four-game series against a 20-12 and 12 Philadelphia Phillies. This is going to be hard. We got Bryce Harper, uh, Bryce Harper and Kyle Tucker, Kyle Schwarber. They got the bats. Pitching-wise, they're going to be struggling a little bit besides the Zach Wheeler. Christopher Sanchez, Colby Allard, and Ranger Suarez. Those should be three games that we win. But this Zach Wheeler one, that's going to be a toss-up. So let's see how we're going to do. Start off with a loss. Not good. Helio, uh, Helio Ramos. Uh, blister on the finger. Keep him active. Strada has a 10-game hitting streak. Okay. Top of the seventh. We're up 2 nothing. Man on second. So a chance to extend his hitting streak and, and possibly make this a three-run game. Damn, we have the seventh most stolen bases in the league. OPS is second. On base percentage is second best in the league. These are things I like to see, boys. And gals. 0-2. Oh Take the first one. Damn. Sir Anthony Dominguez and Matt Strom warming up in the bullpen. Both righties. I like Strom's uh, glove. Blue. The blue glove. I like that. Let's go, Estrada. Ball one. 
I'm going to make this man work, if nothing else. Spencer Turnbull. Two, one. A little wild with some of his pitches here early on. This is why I don't want to just swing at everything. Two and one. Looking to drive something. Into the outfield. This is going to at least move the runner over. Warning track, grab. Like I said, moves the runner over to third. Sucks that we weren't able to, to line that one up properly. Just got underneath it a little too much. But we're going to get one more chance. Ah, Real Muto hit a triple for an RBI. Marsh hit it hit in him. Tied game 2-2 two, two now. Top of the 10. Damn. Are we going to blow this fucking game? No, we're not. Get down. Damn. Line drive out right to the center fielder. Thought that was going to get down. We got a hold of it. And we do lose in extra innings. Hitting me. Phil Bickford blowing it in the eighth for us. Oh, I told you they're bad. Giancarlo Stan, two for four with a home run. Jorge Soler, two for four with a two doubles. So we need to win. Uh, Vaughn, auto utilize him. And we got our scouts coming back. What's going on here? Nothing from the right field side for the West. So, okay. Done pretty much with you there. We're just going to start focusing on some players. Uh, Emmett Underwood, how are you looking now? 68 to 94. Potential 46 to 72 overall. I think this dude's going to be a stud. I really do. I like his. I like his stuff. His hits over nine needs improvement, but every everywhere else is is pretty stellar. Pretty stellar out of everything else. Only a three pitch mix too. Oh, if his stamina wasn't so good, I'd say that he should probably be in our bullpen. Maybe that's what he does early on in uh in his career. So just cancel, cancel, cancel. Boom, 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 boom. So let's see. So let's just scout a prospects. I don't know what prospect we're supposed or what pick we're supposed to have. Pick number 13. So we're supposed to be right around here. Sean Warren, Jason Yabara. All right, Tom Rutledge. Oh, that's right. I wanted to scout uh, relief pitching as well. I think we already did some relief pitchers, didn't we? Yeah, we did do some. We did do some relief pitching. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Okay, so relief pitchers are already done. Don't need a closer because we got Duvall. Let's, uh... All right, so these are the three prospects I've decided to take a look at. Uh, we're going after who we are ranking 59 MLB at 67 ranked prospect, Donnie Harris. He's a left fielder from Missouri, 5'10", 171 pounds. His potential is between 61 and 95 overall, between 60 and 94. His future stats look Amazing. It's pretty much 99s across the board. He's got a good, a phenomenal arm, phenomenal arm accuracy. He should have some good, some really above average speed as well. His bat might need some development, but also he could be MLB ready right away. Um, with if you're looking at the stat, 52 to 86 contact versus righties, so he hits uh, righties really, really well. Not so much against lefties. That's something we're gonna have to develop. Vision could be below par as well, but we can we could upgrade that, especially since his plate discipline seems to be pretty decent. We're also going to be scouting uh, starting pitcher Sidney Kennedy. Uh, Kennedy, uh, Kennedy, Sidney Kenny. Um, he is an 18-year-old, ranked number 38 by us, 41 by MLB. He is a right-handed starting pitcher, six foot, 198 pounds from Kansas. Uh, he is he has really good stamina. 
really good home runs over nine. His pitching velocity is elite, so he's got he throws an absolute cannon, and his breaking stuff is pretty good as well. His arm strength and accuracy is pretty good. So I think he's he's going to be have a cannon of an arm. He throws a running fastball, a changeup, a slider, and a curveball. Um, those are his. He's a four pitch mix pitcher. Maybe he develops that fifth pitch while in the MLB. Um, taking a look at our last man, we got Alonzo Espos. Uh, Esposito. Um, he is from Mexico. He's 19 years of age, coming out of high school, six foot, 198 pounds. He has 65 to 96 potential, 55 to 86 overall. Um, he has a five pitch mix of a four seam, two seam curveball, changeup, and a splitter. Um, it seems that his curveball seems to be one of his better pitches right now. Great stamina. Pretty good strikeouts, pretty good walks, elite pitch velocity, elite uh, break. His arm accuracy is elite as well right now. I think this dude could be a nice steal in the draft. MLB has him ranked 19. If he falls, he should be right around number 35. Um, we have him ranked number 35. MLB has him ranked number 19. I didn't even actually notice that the first time. I'm gonna actually, actually, we're going to change him. We're going to change him for one of the later guys. Let's go with... Where is he? Where is my guy? It wasn't Logan Walk. I was close to trying to go after Logan Walk. But I don't think I really want to right now feel like there's a better player somewhere in here. We could go after Luis Feliz. Yeah. Left-hander, 21 years of age, from Kentucky. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to go with Luis instead. We're going to go with Luis Feliz as our third guy instead. Finalize the weekly scouting plan. Good, 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 good. Good, good, good. So we got three guys now being scouted. Let's finish off this series. We got two more games. Johnny Cueto, Blake Snell. We need these two wins. Do not let our streak, our uh, series winning streak, come to an end. It is. We lose game number three. At least don't get swept. That's all I can ask. River Cats have 27 players on their roster. Oh, shit. All right, Dolan Jeffries. Move you here. Eric Miller back. Ah, oh, Mason Black, put you there. Eric Mill stay. Uh, roster. Triple A hitters. Wade Meckler, send you down to double A. That doesn't mess with our lineups either. Perfect. So that's how we're going to be rolling down there in triple A. Can we get at least one win? Doesn't seem like it. Chapman has an 11 game hitting streak going. So we're going to get swept by the Phillies. We could have at least won a game, but we choked it. Oh, we choked it. Best we can do now is uh, now try to continue Matt Chapman's hitting streak at Matt. least. He's 0 for 2 with a walk. 5 for 12 in this series. We got speed over there on second. Damn. No ball. One strike. Got underneath that. Yeah. Got me with the cutter. Got me with the cutter, Wheeler. Let's go, Chappie. And that's a pop out. Just underneath it. Alright, end of the seventh. We're going to get another chance here in the ninth. We are top of the ninth. We were able to score one, but they scored one. Fitzgerald hit a solo home run. But Kyle Schwarber also hit a solo home run. Ball. So Nick Nelson One in. Ball. No strike. 
two outs, top of the ninth. Needs six runs to win. And that's gone. Matt Chapman blasted one out of the park to continue his winning streak, uh, his hitting streak at least. We'll take it. We will take it. 414 feet, 101.9 exit velocity. We'll take it, Chapman. Keep that rolling into the next series. The Philadelphia Phillies are a tough opponent. They're a tough opponent. They're definitely going to be a playoff team. Team we got to keep in our eyes on as well. We might see them in the playoffs if we make it there. Absolute bomb by Chapman there. But I think that's all that's going to be wrote. That's going to be written. Yeah, we only once said we're really able to score. Someone else scored in the ninth, too. Oh, that's right. Fitzgerald hit a home run. So Patrick Bailey, Chapman, and Fitzgerald all with some home runs. We get swept there. And I think. We're going to bench Yastrzemski against righties for Giancarlo Stanton just so we can get more of a power. Put Stanton over there. Flores bats fifth. Move Chapman up to fifth, actually. Yeah, we'll do that. Stremski's going to be batting against lefties now. All right, so that's how we're going to roll. That's where we're going to roll. Move Chapman into an everyday outfielder role. Against Colorado, this is where the bats are going to come alive. That You can fly here in Colorado, but when you play at home, when you play on the road in Colorado, like Colorado is literally a 50-50 shot. Every game. Every game. Because they're not good but they win games at home just because of their, their ballpark because they can hit home runs there. So we got Webb, Harrison, Jordan Hicks. Sounds like three wins right in a row. Uh, River Cats have 14 pitchers. We're only allowed 13. All right. Uh, we'll send down Sean Hagella. No, I want him pitching more. Eric Miller. Send down Eric Miller. Move him down to double A. And we'll send Tyler. Uh, Austin Warren will send down to class A. Yeah. Uh, put you here. Make a villa, put you in the setup role along with Eric Miller. He can win. Eric Silva there. Okay. So let's keep on rolling. Keep on rolling. Three games against Colorado should be three wins. Up 10 nothing in the eighth, like I said. All right. Oh, my Jesus Christ. Notable player so far, Wilmer Flores. Three for four, two runs, a home run, three RBIs, a stolen base, and a, a walk. Webb's got a uh, shutout going, but Tavar just hit a triple. Anything into the outfield, and they score. Anything. Seventh in the league for runs right now, 23rd. So we've had the 23rd most runs against as well. So throw that circle change inside. Fouls that one off. Okay. That sinker now sinker in the same spot. Got him. Ooh, there we go, Webb. And him with that four seam fastball. Ah, the 
Face up is 50-50, gotcha. Hit him with the slider then. Get him chasing off the plate, pops it up. No, I'm not gonna get it. That's yours, that's yours, that's yours. There we go, keep the man over on third as well. That's out number one. The designated hitter. Not as easy as the Blake Snell one. Charlie Blackman coming up, their leadoff man. Oh, now we gotta face the top of their lineup too. Circle change, strike one. Sinker in. Rounded over to the shortstop, and that's out number two. But Colorado does score. I think that'll be it for our night. Nope, they're gonna let us keep going. See if we can get out of the inning at least, save a arm in that bullpen. Fucking Charlie Blackman, you clutch motherfucker. Four-seam fastball outside part of the plate. Trying to punch him out. Ah, just a little bit outside. All right, hit him with that slider then. See if we can get him there. Just gonna follow that one off, all right. Walk him away. Walk him away. Mm, too much. Him with that circle change then, inside. Hit on to the shortstop, Estrada again. No, not Estrada, Luciano who throws it. Why, my bad. It's because I called you Estrada last time, wasn't it? You did that on purpose, Luciano. That'll be a base hit, man on first now. After an error throw, circle change, strike one. Circle change again, strike two. You can't hit it, so I'm gonna keep throwing it. Oh, but he doesn't give chase there. Try him with that slider. Popped him out. Strada, actually a Strada this time. Under it, out number three. 10-1 at the end of eight. I think that's going to be it for our night. Do think they're going to pull us? Yeah, they do pull us. And do we wind up finishing it? Bouchard hit an RBI triple to make it 10-2. So we win this game 10-2. We don't completely shut out Colorado, but we do show that we're a dominant force over this crappy, crappy Western Conference team. Logan Webb gets his fifth win of the year, third loss of the year for Austin Gomber. 12 hits, 10 runs, not bad, not bad. Wilmer Our Flores, three for four tonight. with a home run, three for RBIs and two uh, two ten runs. Ten Giancarlo ten Stan ten hits ten another ten home run. Two, uh, He hit a double, two RBIs and a run. Jorge Soler hits a home run, and Marco Luciano, another home run, dude. Luciano for Rookie of the Year. This dude's been bombing. He's our leading home run guy, and he's batting at the bottom of our lineup. Like, this dude's balling. He's balling. All right, so we got Kyle Harrison and Jordan Hicks coming up. Again, should be two wins, up 9 nothing in the top of the uh, top of the eighth, two outs. Strada needs a triple to hit for the cycle. Oh, now we're hitting for the cycle. Now batting, second base. All righty. Here we go. Tyler Shrada. We need a gapper and a lucky bounce off the wall. Mm. Just missing that one. Just missing that cutter too early. Got Jake Bird on the mound. He's just coming off the pen. Ah. Soft rounder to third. Out number three. End of the eighth. Not going to hit for that cycle. Not going to hit for that cycle, but it's all right. Matt Chapman hits an RBI single, and then Bouchard hits a three-run home run for Colorado, making it a 10-3 game in the bottom of the ninth. That's fine. Kyle Harrison picks up the win. Jorge Soler, player of the game, three for four with an RBI and two doubles. Other home runs. We're hit by Estrada, who went three for four. Three Wilmer Flores, four two for four with a home run here as well. Flores, ever since getting moved out of the uh, moved down in the lineup, has been like, hey, hey, watch this. Hold my beer, Giancarlo. 
Athletics want to offer us left fielder Miguel Andohar for starting pitcher Keaton Wynn. Uh, no. No, I'm good with that. Uh, Jordan Hicks against Dakota Hudson. Again, pick up the win. 9-7. Total of 29 runs against the Colorado Rockies there. Shenikis Cabrera picks up his first win as a San Francisco Giant as well. Coming in for relief there. Nice job there. Uh, now on the back, coming back in San Francisco at home. We got Johnny Cueto, Blake Snell, and Logan Webb. About to take on Frankie Montes, Nick Martinez, and Hunter Green. Now, Cincinnati, 500 team. Oh, we're second place now. Two games away from catching up to the Dodgers. Keep the momentum going here against Cincinnati. Now that we're back at home, we actually got the Dodgers series coming up. So you just got to keep us within within three games because who knows? Maybe we sweep them here at home. I doubt it, but there's a potential that that happens here. Cincinnati, 500 team. Two out of the three games I'll be happy with. Win two out of the three. Move in. Matt Chapman sustained an injury. He tore his finger. No, tore a finger ligament. Our everyday third baseman is gone. 10-day injured list. We do pick up the 5-3 to three win, though. Taylor Rogers picking up the win over uh, Ian Gilbert, who takes the loss. Oh, man. Matt Chapman was on fire, too. So we need a new third baseman. Could be Nick Ahmed. Could be Tyler Fitzgerald. All right, so this is what I've come up with. I Against righties, I moved Blake Sable from catcher to third base, moving Patrick Bailey into the lineup to play catcher for us. Um, new lineup against righties is going to be Lee, Estrada, Stanton, Soler, Flores, Wade Jr., Bailey, Luciano, and Sable. Against lefties, what I did was I just threw in the rookie, Tyler Fitzgerald. So against lefties, it's going to be Jung Ho Lee, Estrada, Stanton, Soler, Flores, Fitzgerald, Yastrzemski, Luciano, and Bailey. Now, Luciano is cold, but he is still tied for the leader right now for home runs on this team with eight. He's tied with Jorge Soler. Giancarlo Stanton only has three. His batting average has gone down since playing with us, but that's expected when you're going to get more at bats happening. He's batting 270 uh, right now, down from 290. It's still fine. Dude's going to be raking it in. I'm not too worried about it. So two more games against Cincinnati. Chance to sweep, yes. But I'd just like to pick up at least one more win if we are going to take a loss here. 10-5 to win. Let's go. Let's fucking go. Scouting-wise, how'd this happen? How's this working? Uh, Luis Feliz, potential 72 to 85. His overall is between 64 and 77. So Luis Feliz, the 21-year-old from Kentucky, might be MLB ready right away, it seems. Nice. I like to see that. Same kind of happening for Donnie Harris and Sidney Kennedy, the 18-year-olds. Okay. I do want to learn more about these guys because high... High 80s, potentially. You're still in the 90s. You're overall still in the 80s as well. I've learned everything I want to learn about Luis. So let's just move on over. Pick a new prospect. Um, Alfonso Esposito. Again, you're not ranked 19. I think we know what we need to know about you. Uh, la -do 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 -do. What do we got? 75. Steve Ramos from Ohio. 44 to 68. Potential of 75 to 99. Yeah, we're just going to have you scout in general while you guys focus on actual players. Finalize the weekly scouting plan. Cincinnati. Logan Webb against Hunter Green. Can we sweep the Cincinnati Reds and go on our sixth game winning streak? We're up one nothing. Webb has a shutout going in the top of the ninth in a one nothing game, bro. Put put Duvall in this bitch. Put Duvall in it. Bob Melvin, man. 
What are you doing? What are you doing? So Matt McClain up to bat with his pink bat right now. Yeah, four hits allowed. Like Logan Webb already over a hundred pitches on the day. Soft liner over to third base. He's got a little speed, but it doesn't matter. Our boy Fitzgerald throwing him out. No, Blake Sable. Never, my bad, my bad. The former catcher, Blake Sable, throwing him out instead. Shamir Candelario. Try to hit him with that sinker low and away. Too much of the plate. Fouled that one off. Mackenzie Gore fires seven innings of one hit ball in a loss against the White Sox. Steven Kwan has an 18 game hitting streak happening right now. Fastball in, popped him up. Patrick Bailey getting under it. And I'll be out number two. Corey Julbic breaks out of a one for 21 27 slump with a two run home run. Dylan Moore steals three bases in loss versus Athletics. So here we go, chance for a complete game with Jonathan India. He's one for two today. Hit him with that inside circle change. Fouled, or hits this one over to the second baseman, Estrana out number three. Logan Webb gets himself a complete game shutout. Close one too, Bob Melvin, that's ballsy. That just kind of goes to show that he has complete faith in Logan Webb. I think if Kyle Harrison or, or uh, Jordan Hicks were in, was in that situation, I don't think he would have let that happen. I think it's because he knows Logan Webb is an ace pitcher that he let that happen. Nine innings, four hits allowed, six strikeouts, two walks. Blake Sable went two for three with an RBI. Jung Ho Koo, uh, Jung Ho Koo. Jung Ho Lee uh, went one for four with a double. Corey Solaire walked twice in today's game as well. So Solaire, good plate discipline. Good plate discipline. And we get our six-game winning streak continuing, heading still into a tough series against the L.A. Dodgers. We're now one game uh, in front of them or behind them. Two games ahead of the or three games ahead of the Diamondbacks and the San Diego Padres. We are in the third wild card spot behind the Phillies and Braves. Phillies swept us, so we helped them get ahead of us in the uh, standings there. But this is going to be our toughest games yet. We got the LA Dodgers last time we played them in a three game series. We were able to win one of those games, but we got demolished in the other two. So we got Kyle Harrison, Jordan Hicks, and Johnny Cueto. It's not like we have our aces um, or our top pitchers against the L.A. Dodgers right now. We do have the depth of our bullpen against them. Win at least one of these games for me, please. All right, win, win, loss, and this should be a win. Let's go. Solaire has two home runs with bases loaded. We're up 9-1 to one with Alexis Vizia. We're remembering that 15-8 to eight score earlier in the year, and we're looking at them. We're like, we could do that. We could do that to the Dodgers here at home in front of our home crowd. People are going crazy. We got the fifth least or fifth most strikeouts in the Come league. Out. Nice. Come two for two. two. Two home runs, four RBIs, three runs Jorge. scored. For Jorge Soler so far today, he's looking for a grand slam. Here we go, one time, like a big dog. Let's go, buddy. Let's go. Ball. Fastball down low. They might walk him. Daniel Hudson and JP Ferizin. Ferizin. Are in the bullpen, both righties. With the LA Dodgers. Oh! Just early. Solaire was feeling it. Just go, fucking pulled this. that one. Ah, ah fastball. Yeah, got me there. Too one late. Ball, too went from early to too late. And he got me with the circle change. Leaving the bases loaded. Damn it. 
my own fault. Doesn't matter. We still pick up the win. Way to go. San Francisco Giants putting the league on notice. Even putting the Dodgers on notice. Started the season off a little slow. A little slow. And we're starting to pick it up. Johnny Cueto beating Walker Bueller. Look at that. The veteran Cueto putting in himself a performance. Nice. Will Smith went four for four for the Dodgers. Damn. Uh, notable players for us. Uh, side Solaire. Mike Yastrzemski went two for five with a home run and three RBIs. Jung Ho Lee went one for three with an RBI and two runs scored. And uh, uh, Teo Estrada went two for five with a double and a run to his name. Good. Good. I'm liking to see it. I like seeing us in the home run column, especially as we're trying to chase Barry Bonds 30 home run season. So taking off a rest day. Now we got the Colorado Rockies now at our home stadium. Should it again be three easy dubs against them. It should. Um, we are now first place in our division. We're half a game ahead of the LA Dodgers. I like to try to continue that here against Colorado. Come on, three dubs, three dubs. Bases loaded, bottom of the ninth. With down by two. Wilmer Flores. It's time to be clutch. It's it's time to be clutch. We can't be losing to the Colorado Rockies. We can't be doing it. So Wilmer Flores, one for four today with a single and a run scored. Up next to the Giants. Hit into the outfield, the should tie the game. Wilmer Flores. Don't got a lot of speed over there on second either, though. That slurve. Oh, they throw the submarine at me. Wilmer Flores, one more hit away from 1,000 career hits as well. Damn, that slurve, dude. I do not like submarine pitchers. Pitchers. Come on. Fuck you, Lawrence. Ground down to the third baseman. Out number three. Rockies win. Fucking submarines. Hate them. Marco Luciano, another home run. Two for four today. I'm glad with that. Genesis Cabrera takes the L... So we did have the lead, and we blew it late in the game. The seventh and eighth inning, not good, boys. We can't be blowing shit. Two more games against Colorado. Just pick up the wins. We don't. We lose game number two. They're trying to make a, have us trade for him again. I don't want to. God damn it. And we're now a game and a half behind from the L.A. Dodgers. Had a chance to take first place, and Colorado is screwing us over, man. Screwing us over. So we got the, these guys 100% scouted now. Looks like uh, C to B potential for both of them. Um, and they're going to pretty much be immediately where they already are. Okay, so both of them are pretty good prospects. And they're both looking like they're going to be MLB ready right away. So Donnie Harris going to be probably somewhere in the 70s um, to start his career at 18 years of age. I think that potential should hop up. Looking at Sidney Kennedy, again, high 60s to probably low 70s for him. He might be a starting pitcher that is ready right away. So we got ourselves an outfielder and starting pitcher that I, I really I really like. So we'll wind up canceling all of our scouts and let me uh, take a look at what I want to do here. All right, so these are going to be the three guys that we're going to try scouting See if we can figure out anything about them. We're going to go after Derek Nunez, who is a first base prospect, 21 years of age, 6'5", 225 pounds from Alabama. Uh, presently, he's not the greatest overall guy, but the potential is there. He seems to be a really good fielder and have some decent speed. He's pretty much just decent all around besides for his fielding. He's got a little bit of above average, average fielding, but really a guy that we're going to have to develop is really his potential. I want to see if he is like a, a high 90s, a potential prospect there. He's 21, so we have time to develop him as well. Next guys are two starting pitchers, both 18 years of age, uh, both lefties. We're going after Tim Cherry, not ranked. He's not a ranked prospect. Potential of 57 to 89 overall, and overall of 55 to 87. Uh, he's six foot, 175 pounds from Michigan. He has uh, elite hits over nine, elite stamina, 
uh, above average walks, above average pitch control, above average pitch velocity, and above average break. The dude seems to be pretty good over there. Arm strength is elite as well. He's got a four pitch mix of a four seamer, cutter, changeup, and a sinker. And then you go over to Truman Porter. He's got a 50, uh, 54 to 86 uh, potential, 55 to 87 overall. He's six foot three, 208 pounds from Ohio. Again, He's got above average everywhere. He's got elite stamina and elite pitch break, elite arm strength and elite arm accuracy with above average hits over nine, walks over nine, home runs over nine, pitch control and pitch velocity. Um, I, these guys are both supposed to be not ranked, so we're kind of taking a shot in the dark right now to see if these guys will pan out and if that potential is there because honestly they could also just be like 55 overall guys with potentials in the 60s um, but I want to kind of see what they are because they, they look like they got the potential to be something really good for us so that's going to be our weekly scouting plan there farming off two losses against Colorado we need a win we get swept all right we get swept by the Colorado Rockies how Wonderful. Of all the teams that we've played, that's the team that's going to sweep us in front of our home crowd. Ah, oh, how amazing. How amazing. All right, so because of that, we're still three games ahead of the Padres, four games ahead of the Diamondbacks, and we're three games behind the L.A. Dodgers. Not the greatest, not the greatest, but we got the Pittsburgh Pirates coming up, all right? They're a young team still. We're heading on the road into Pittsburgh. Jared Jones, Bailey Falter, Mitch, Kel uh, yeah. Mitch Keller on the road. We got Jordan Hicks, Johnny Cueto, and Blake Snell pitching for us. So the last game, we got our ace. Didn't seem to really help us against the Rockies. Let's see if it'll help us against Pittsburgh. Can the depth of our uh, starting rotation work out? Win, loss, win. All righty. So where were we? All right. So we just beat Pittsburgh coming off a embarrassing, embarrassing sweep. Um, now we got the New York Mets, 24 and 27. Jose Quintana, Sean Manea, and Luis Severino. Again, this is a series I'd like to win at least two out of the three. New York Mets have the bats. It's just if their pitching staff is going to be on for the day. Logan Webb, Kyle Harrison, Jordan Hicks. Sounds like three wins to me. Win, win. Boom, boom. Luis Matos down in AAA. Keep him active. Uh, yep. And now we got a new scouting. How is everyone looking? How is everyone looking? Again, like, I, look, look. This is what I'm talking about. These So these guys were, like, projected in the 90s. Now they're down into, like, the 80s. Uh, this dude... I think I don't know they might just be C potential guys they really might but we know everything we want and we need to know about Derek Nunez so this is Derek Nunez full scouting yeah potential between 81 and 91 overall of 43 to 53 yeah, 21 years of age from Alabama. Not really the greatest prospect there, I guess. So, we've learned what we want to kind of learn about you guys. Uh, let's see here. They're telling us to scout these top guys, but we got pick number 13. You really think that right fielder Damon Hay is going to fall to us? You really think so? I'll do it. I'll move him. I mean, I will scout him if you guys really think, but I don't know. I don't see it working out for us. We'll at least get something scouted on him, I guess. Uh, so everybody in the first round will at least get a little bit of attention. That's recommended for us, so we'll do that. Damon Hayes, Joey Howard, Alan Page. We'll go with that. Finalize the week. Okay, so there we go. Final game against the New York Mets. Chance to sweep them, coming off a 4-2 to win against them, and we're going to lose 6-3. to 
to two or six to three. All right, so that's fine. Like I said, win two out of the three against the New York Mets. I will be happy. Uh, wow, we're we're getting really ahead of the Diamondbacks and the Padres. They're sitting uh, right around 500, actually subpar of 500. I don't know what teams they've been playing, but it doesn't look too well for them. Three and a half games behind the L.A. Dodgers right now as well. Now we got the Philadelphia Phillies coming up. They swept us at their home park. One run games every, uh, pretty much every game except for the final two. We got Johnny Cueto, Blake Snell, and Logan Webb. Our two aces are going to be the back end uh, along with our fifth. They got Christopher Sanchez, Aaron Nolan, and Ranger Suarez. Two of those pitchers we played uh, in that series. Aaron Nola, I don't think we did. But uh, let's try to pick up uh, let's try to pick up two of these wins because if you remember, they beat us, which caused them actually to be the league leader for that wild card spot. So I'd like I'd like to win two out of these three. We're a better home team than we are an away team. Our team plays better at home. Let's fucking do this. Two out of the three, boys. Two out of the three. Uh, six nothing. Estrada's got a ten game hitting streak. We'll try to extend it. We'll try to extend it. Ah, man. Maybe if we get the hit that, I mean, we're going to lose this game, which is unfortunate, but, um, yeah, let's, let's try maybe getting this hit with Estrada will, uh, get something going in the next couple games. Nick Nelson. I solved that one up just late, though. Come on. Come on, Strata. Batting 322. Yeah. Laggy. Laggy hit there. Pecked the plate. One and two. Don't swing at anything stupid like that. They got Dominguez and Strom warming up in their bullpen. Kind of stretching tossing right now. Oh, you made me look silly, Nelson. Fuck. Son of a bitch. Oh, Mike Trout is the AL leading home run getter with 18. Marcelo Osuna reported his 800th career RBI as well. So Solaire hit a solo home run. Bottom of the ninth, down by three. Ah, oh, you're making me look silly again. Jose Alvarado coming in for the save. Not a boy Solaire, by the way. Ah, I got under it. That's out number two. Yeah, that's out number two. And we're going to lose six to three. Damn it, Sean Carlos Stan, one for five with a two run home run. Solaire went two for three with a home run as well. Tyler Pichero, one for four with a double. Jung Ho Lee, two for five with a double. Johnny Cueto taking the L, allowing 10 hits. Damn. So we got to win back-to-back -back games with our aces here. There's the first win. Yes, 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 yeah! Back-to-back -back wins. Houston coming over to us, asking if we would like Kenny Corona. 24-year-old, 5'10", 184 pounds from Venezuela. Deep potential. He's batting 364 up in the majors, 265 in AAA, and they would want starting pitcher win. Um, how's he doing? 415. He's got 415 down in AA, one win, one loss. 29 strikeouts. I mean, I don't really like that. We are pretty deep when it comes to starting pitchers, too. Dude's got average. I'll give him that. Good speed, good fielding. Just needs to work on his hitting. Don't like that potential of D either. I'm going to say no because of the potential D. So end, uh, we're reaching the end of May, about to get into June. I think this video has gone on long enough. Streaming-wise, we're reaching the two-hour two mark. But look at the lineup real quick. Jung-Ho Lee batting 292, five home runs. Nice. Strata above 
above 300. Love to see that. Giancarlo Stanton's getting cold, but he has increased his numbers, hitting five home runs since being acquired by our team. He's down to a 227 batting average. That that should be right. Yeah, he yeah with this with what he's been doing the last couple seasons, it's probably right. And honestly, it's probably because he's facing a lot more righties that uh, that's happening there. Uh, seeing some digression as well with him. Jorge Soler up to 15 home runs. If you guys remember, I think he was at five home runs at the beginning of the month. So he's at double digit home runs in the uh, in the month of May. Love to see that out of Soler. Wilmer Flores, he's on fire, batting, uh, hitting five home runs, batting 277. So we might want to do this. Have Soler. So we're going to move Soler down to five. Lamont Wade Jr. still batting 284. I like that. Patrick Bailey increased his batting percentage up to 257 since becoming the everyday catcher once again. The rookie Marco Luciano, 11 home runs, batting 251 in that eighth hole. And then Blake Sable, 183. Batting average playing third base. I don't uh, I don't really like that. Don't really like that at all. I might want to move Nick Ahmed. I might want to move Nick Ahmed in there. But, I mean, Sable's got that potential still. B potential. He's developing. He is growing. He's getting better vision. It's that vision. I bet you it's that vision. Strikeouts, 42 to 20. Yeah, it's his vision. We got to get that vision up if we want him to start hitting a little bit better. So Blake Sable will turn it around. He's going to be, yeah, he'll probably bat right around 220, 215, 220, if I was to guess. Um, against lefties, keep Stanton batting third. Keep Stanton batting third. Just against righties, we're going to swap him out for batting number five. Yeah, but the, the rest of the team... I think should be good. Mike Jastrzemski's on fire again. Yeah, you know what? Mm, he crushes lefties, so keep him against lefties. We're going to move... Yeah, Stremski up. Luciano up against lefties. Patrick Bailey. We're going to move up against lefties. Have Fitzgerald hit clean up against left-handed bats. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's going to be our new batting rotation. Nice, nice. Luciano, fucking rookie of the year right there. Pitching-wise, 75 innings, 78 strikeouts for Blake Snell. He's on fire. Logan Webb, 75 innings pitch, 52 strikeouts. He's 8-3. and three. Snell's 7-2. Kyle Harrison, 64 innings pitch, 47 strikeouts for him right now um, as well. Jordan Hicks, 1-4. Wow, so he's not doing the great, but he is developing. I like that. Stamina has not gotten any increase whatsoever. He's got a 5 ERA again, the worst ERA um, out of everybody in our rotation. Still love the velocity, though. Johnny Cueto, the old man Cueto, 3-3, three and three, um, 63 innings pitch, 33 strikeouts with a 4.43 ERA. And Spencer Howard only got one win in the month of May, going 5-2, 44 innings pitch, 36 strikeouts with a 6.04 ERA for him. Looking at our bullpen, Luke Jackson, 1.96 ERA. I like that. 23 innings pitch, 25 strikeouts. Good. Tyler Rogers, 25 innings pitch, 18 strikeouts, 3.5 ERA. Genicus Genesis Cabrera with our team. Yeah, nine ERA, uh, nine innings pitched, eight strikeouts, five ERA. You gotta, you gotta increase that, dude. You gotta get better than that. Uh, Phil Bickford, buddy, you, you've, you've developed. Okay, he has gone up by one overall since coming to our team. Even though everything says minus one. 26 innings pitched, 18 strikeouts, two blown saves. Damn it. 2.42 ERA, though. So he doesn't allow a lot of runs. Um, Tyler, we're actually going to put. It seems that they use Bickford as like the setup guy whenever Taylor Rogers is tired. But Taylor Rogers, 18 innings pitched, 21 strikeouts with a 2.45 ERA. He's got 11 holds and three saves. Camilo Duvall, 16 innings pitched, 22 strikeouts with a 5.51 ERA. 
13 saves. He has been perfect so far through the month of May. He was, I think, I think he had eight chances in total, and he he went seven and one. So what's that make him now? Six, six, six saved opportunities in the month of May. Nice to see him developing as well. We will have to try to negotiate his contract sometime in the middle of the season. Looking at our top prospects, Reggie Crawford. How are you doing, buddy? Down here in Triple A, uh, pitching wise, he's three and three, 53 innings pitch, 59 strikeouts with a 3.57 ERA. I like that. Looking at his hitting stats now. Uh, 142 plate appearances, 28 hits, 31 strikeouts, batting 197. Mm, yikes. Yikes. He cannot hit against lefties. Carton, Carson Weisenhunt is having a pretty strong AAA performance. 7-3 record, 63 innings pitch, 48 strikeouts with 2.14 ERA. While Taj Bradley, our newly acquired Taj Bradley, um, over with our team. 43 innings pitched, 48 strikeouts with a 2.91 ERA. I'm loving that as well. Going down to double A, we got to be looking at Bryce Eldridge. Where is he? Where is he? Bryce Eldridge. There he is. All right. Batting 241. Three home runs, 12 RBIs. I like that. Two stolen bases, more hits than strikeouts. That's always a plus as well. So Bryce Eldridge developing pretty good down there in double A, I want to say. Um, looking at the triple A hitters, Jason Dominguez increased his batting percentage up to 232. And now three home runs, 19 RBIs, one stolen base so far through the year. Um, Helio Ramos. How are you looking? Uh, 252, two home runs, 16 RBIs with five stolen bases. Toribio, two, two stolen bases, two times hot stealing, 253, uh, six home runs, 21 RBIs. And Luis Mato finally catching fire here in the month of May after getting demoted from the leadoff man. He is batting 246 with three home runs, 18 RBIs. Nice. Love to see that. So I'm glad that our prospects are doing good. MLB team is doing really good right now. Um, let me know their, uh, what you thought about those trades that happened earlier in the season. Anything else you guys would like me to commentate on or talk about around the league. And uh, I, think, I think next episode, either next episode or the one after that, will be the uh the trade deadline i think the trade the de trade de not trade deadline uh the draft draft when is uh when is the mlb draft in t july 14th through the 16th so this is supposed to be the mlb draft right here during the all-star break so we're still a whole nother month away actually so I'm I'm okay with that. I am 100% okay with that. We got one more month of basically trying to secure our playoff position. Um, but anyways, guys, I hope you got. Oh wow, yeah, it says right there, July 13th is going to be the draft. So right here, middle of the series against the Minnesota Twins, right before the All Star break, will be our draft. I think we're going to be uh, drafting some studs over here. If you guys remember last year, we wound up drafting actually year number one, the number one ranked prospect because he fell all the way to our pick. Like you're you're not not gonna draft that dude if he falls the number one pick going into double digits you're taking him but anyways guys hope you all enjoyed till next time see you welcome to my party we're just getting started a life is a dream or a nightmare scarring hand me a drink because i think i'm going all in get me a shrink who can catch me when i'm falling cover up my scars flip the handlebars crashing in my car wake up in a bar i'll be a superstar 